All right, so this video is about using the rational zeros theorem to help us find the real zeros of polynomial functions, okay? So this looks really crazy right here. I totally get that. Uh, but we've, this all this says is we've got a polynomial function, p of x, equal to some value, okay? Now these n values just represent the degree of the function and the coefficient of that leading term, okay? So don't get overwhelmed by all the notation here, okay? Uh, so this just represents any polynomial function of degree n, all right? And we'll keep going in decreasing order. Notice the exponents go in decreasing order until we get x to the first and then our constant term here at the end, okay? So two things we want to be looking for. We want, we want to look for the values of p and q, okay? Well, p are going to be the factors of the constant here. Whatever value is here, we want to completely factor that and see what all numbers uh, can be divided by that. We're going to use that as potential uh, numerators to find our zeros, okay? Q is going to be the leading coefficient, this a sub n here. Okay, we're want to, going to want to completely factor that as well. We want all positive factors of each. We want all the negative uh, potential factors of each, okay? So we're looking for P, we're looking for Q, and we're going to divide those uh, to find the possible zeros, okay? So finding the rational zeros of a polynomial, we want to list all the possibilities, okay? And that's going to be this P over Q here. All right, and I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a second. We're going to use those potential zeros, those possible zeros, and we're going to use synthetic division, and we're going to use the remainder theorem and factor theorem we just learned about uh, to find which of those possible zeros are actual zeros of the polynomial, okay? And we're going to do this over and over again until we completely factor every polynomial that we could be working with, okay? So let's take this example right here. We've got p of x equal to x cubed minus 3x plus 2, okay? So p, well, p is going to be 2. It's the constant here. And we want to think about what are the factors of p. Well, p only has two factors here, but we're going to need both the positive and negative versions of those. So 1 times 2 is 2, and negative 1 times negative 2 is also 2. So I need to list both the positive and negative factors there, plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 2, okay? Q is the leading coefficient. Well, Q here is 1, okay? And the only factors of 1 are positive and negative 1, okay? 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is also 1. So I've got to make sure I have the plus or minus versions of all those factors, okay? So now I want to divide all these potential P values by all the potential Q values. And that's going to give me the possible zeros. So first thing I want to do, I want to divide plus or minus 1 times plus or minus 1. And that's going to give me plus or minus 1. And then I want to divide the other factors of P by Q. So plus or minus 1, 2, excuse me, over plus or minus 1 is plus or minus 2. So these are the potential zeros of this polynomial function right here. Okay, so now we want to go, it's just a trial and error thing. We want to just start at the beginning. We're going to use positive 1 as our first one, and hopefully that works. If it doesn't, then we'll try negative 1, and then we try positive 2, and then we try negative 2. Eventually, we're going to get to the factors of this polynomial function, okay? So we're testing 1. We're doing synthetic division. Coefficient of x cubed is 1. There is no x squared term here, so that's going to be 0. Uh, x to the first is negative 3, and then the constant is 2. So let's go through the synthetic division process. Okay, we know how to do this by now, so I'm going to speed through this a little bit. Okay, and notice we get a remainder of zero. Well, that's perfect. Okay, we get a remainder of zero here. Okay, so what that means is x minus 1 is a factor. 1 is a zero of this function, so x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, so... Remember, these three values here are going to give me the quadratic that goes along with that. So it's going to be 1x squared, oops, excuse me, 1x squared plus x minus 2 is going to be the other factor, okay? Now, I want to see if I can factor this, okay? Can this trinomial be factored, okay? And if it can, that's great. It means we don't have to do any more synthetic division. If it can't, then we're going to have to do more synthetic division. So let's see if we can factor this trinomial. x squared plus x minus 2 does factor. 
to x minus 1, x plus 2. Well, that's fantastic, okay? It means no more synthetic division. I don't have to test any more of these possible zeros. I found the other ones, okay? Well, I already had 1 as a 0 from this factor. It looks like it occurs a second time, okay? So I'm going to put those together as x minus 1 squared times x plus 2, okay? That makes this 0 negative 2, which is great because that's part of our possibilities here, okay? If we had tested negative 1, okay, if we had tested positive 2, those wouldn't have worked in synthetic division. Those wouldn't have been zeros, okay? So the zeros of this function then are going to be x minus 1, excuse me, x equals positive 1, which occurs twice here, so that's why a multiplicity of 2. When you're graphing, you know what multiplicity means now, okay? And then the other zero would be negative 2, and that factor only occurs once here. So that's a multiplicity of 1, okay? 